she didn't kiss Edward on the altar, is on a mission to stop blindness, and stood behind Megxit. No wonder Princess Diana called Sophie a goody two-shoes. Though her family was middle class when Sophie was growing up, they do have royal roots. Her father's family has ties to nobility through the Viscount Molesworth. She's also descended from two kings, King Edward III and King Henry IV. Per English monarchs, Sophie and Prince Edward are 11th cousins once removed. As someone from a comfortable but not exceptionally wealthy background, the future Countess of Wessex entered the workforce after finishing her education. She held down a string of jobs after attending Kent College Pembury and West Kent College. Among her many jobs were working in a bar, for a radio station, and at a Swiss resort. Sophie finally found her true calling in public relations, landing a job with MacLaurin Communication and Media. According to the National Portrait Gallery, Sophie worked with other PR companies for a few years, eventually launching her own company, RJH Public Relations, in 1996. As noted on the official website of the royal family, Sophie co-ran the PR firm with a business partner for the next five years, continuing her work with the company for the first few years of her marriage to Prince Edward. As Countess of Wessex, Sophie might be living a real-life fairy tale, but her relationship with Prince Edward wasn't quite the whirlwind romance you might expect. The two first met in 1987, but it wasn't love at first sight. Edward was involved with one of Sophie's friends at the time, and their romance didn't start until 1993 when the pair reconnected at a charity event. The couple took their time dating and getting to know each other, although a royal expert hinted that all may not have been well in those early years. Biographer Ingrid Seward wrote in her book, Prince Edward, that Sophie struggled to adjust to the idea of royal life, while Edward had cold feet. Writing, like all couples, there were moments when the effort of adjusting led to rows and disagreements and, in the summer of 1994, they came precariously close to parting. We've all been through there. We've all had that same spotlight shone on our lives. According to Seward, Sophie fought for the relationship, though, adding, when rumors of the rift became public, she dismissed them as rubbish. She was being elastic with the truth, but it did give her the breathing space she needed to get her relationship back on track again. Things clearly worked out for the couple, with Prince Edward proposing in 1999 when they were both 34 years old. Hello noted that the stunning ring with which he proposed is believed to have cost him over 105,000 pounds. What's a royal wedding without fascinators and over-the-top hats? While the British royal family is known for putting on lavish displays marked by eye-catching headpieces, Sophie and Prince Edward actually banned the fashion stable at their own nuptials on June 19, 1999, per Hello! magazine. The couple wanted an understated celebration without the usual parade of global representatives or military ceremony or hats. The couple didn't even share their first kiss as a married couple in front of their guests. So Edward and Sophie, or the Duke and Duchess of Wessex as they are now, are officially man and wife. No. As one attendee shared via hello, when they left the main room, they gave each other a kiss. It was a great private moment. As far as royal weddings go, it was a very simple wedding, but it was also hardly devoid of glamour. As noted by Tatler, Sophie's gorgeous silk organza gown was encrusted with crystals and pearls, and she wore a tiara loaned by Queen Elizabeth II. Royal fans were eager to see the couple finally tie the knot, with 200 million viewers tuning in to the televised event. The Countess of Wessex is a powerful figure in her own right, but she spent her early years in the limelight in Princess Diana's shadow, drawing many comparisons to the Princess of Wales in the early years of her relationship with Prince Edward. Why? Well, they were of a similar age and both had blonde hair. The journalist Emma Cook claimed a lot of people were keen to forge the Sophie-Diana comparison, according to Express. Cook alleged that there was no love lost between the two women, with Diana allegedly calling Sophie, quote, Little Miss Goody Two-Shoes, and reportedly questioning why Sophie wasn't torn apart by the press as Diana herself was. When Sophie officially joined the royal family in 1999, the world was still reeling from the death of Princess Diana two years earlier. But the comparisons continued. Sophie decided to share her thoughts, saying via the New York Post, "...on an aesthetic basis, I wouldn't think anyone can be unhappy being compared with someone such as her." 
The Countess of Wessex has lived a comparatively low drama life, but even she is not immune to scandals many other members of the royal family have suffered. In 2001, she came under fire after leaked conversations revealed some of her thoughts about the royal family and other prominent figures. Along with complaining about being compared to Princess Diana, she criticized a slew of people, including Cherie Blair as well as her brother-in-law, the now King Charles III. The comments were tapped by tabloid reporters, posing as prospective clients of Sophie's PR firm. The public was outraged when she was reported as having tried to win the would-be clients' business by saying, "...when people find we're working for you, the chances are you'll get people interested." They'll say, oh gosh, they've employed the Countess of Wessex's PR company. The scandal prompted Sophie's early retirement from professional life. After it broke, Sophie announced she was stepping down as chairman of the company, noted the Washington Post. Just months after announcing she was stepping away from her company, Sophie suffered an ectopic pregnancy, per The Guardian. In 2003, she and husband Prince Edward welcomed a daughter, Louise, who was followed in 2007 by a boy, James. As she was adjusting to motherhood, she was also adjusting to life as a full-time working royal. It wasn't easy going from calling the shots to being a diplomatic presence for the many organizations with whom she supports in a royal capacity. As Sophie explained it to The Times, I had to take a really big step back and go, okay, they want you to be the icing on the cake, the person to come in to thank their volunteers and funders, not necessarily to tell them how to run their communications plan. The official website of the royal family notes that Sophie is involved with some 70 organizations and charities. Among the causes she supports are young people, agriculture, and eradicating avoidable blindness. Where there was darkness, there is now light. While Sophie's title is through her husband, don't mistake her for someone willing to simply follow in a man's footsteps. If there were ever any thoughts that she might be a placid princess, they've been put to rest. Over the years, Sophie has come into her own as an outspoken feminist who seems to have little patience for the conventions of royalty. Not only did she continue working after she got married, but she's also been clear about her desire to tackle royal life on her terms. The monarchy can be quite patriarchal. It wasn't until 2013 that the succession to the Crown Act made it so that the oldest child of a monarch can inherit the throne. Prior to this, the oldest male child would become the next king, with a woman only able to take the throne if she had no brothers. Sophie's own son is ahead of her daughter in the line of succession, despite being several years younger. Sophie told The Times that she considers herself a feminist and that she and her husband tackle parenting duties equally. Hello Magazine noted that she's spoken out on feminist issues multiple times, notably calling on leaders of the nations of the Commonwealth to be part of creating, quote, a feminist peace. She has also advocated for empowering women in the finance industry, saying, if we make greater strides towards parity, then we all stand to win there will be bigger slices of a bigger cake for everyone." The world was stunned in January 2020 when Prince Harry and Meghan Markle, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, announced they were stepping back from the royal family. No longer actively working royals, the couple moved to the United States, where they're keeping out of the spotlight. The move proved to be a controversial one, with many dubbing the shock decision Megxit with a Palace Insider even revealing to Sky News, The Duchess of Sussex reportedly wanted to be the UK's Beyonce when she married Prince Harry in 2018. The outrage only deepened after Meghan and Harry spoke out in a bombshell interview with Oprah Winfrey the following year, citing racism as, quote, a large part of it. Amid the media frenzy, Sophie stood by her nephew and his wife, telling The Times, I just hope they will be happy. While Sophie, Countess of Wessex, may not be one of the more famous members of the royal family, she's certainly one they couldn't do without. According to The Times, she attended more than 200 royal engagements in 2019, outpacing even her nephew, Prince William. Reportedly, the royal was also considered, quote, almost as another daughter to the late Queen Elizabeth II, according to former BBC royal correspondent Jenny Bond. She was also reportedly a source of support for the monarch towards the end of Prince Philip's life. 
Sophie has been busier than ever since Prince Harry and Meghan Markle stepped down as senior royals. Prince Andrew's fading from public life after his scandal in 2019 has also had an effect. The Independent notes that Sophie and Prince Edward have helped fill in the gap. And while the Countess is more visible than ever, her primary concern seems to be just doing her duties. As she told BBC Radio 5 Live, It means that there is more attention on what I'm doing, so from that perspective, um, that can only be a good thing. 